Hello everybody, this is Diego Brando, uh, and we are going to be playing through a league with Elephant God Stompy. Uh, so, uh, I recently did deck tech of this deck, and I'll link to it in uh, the description below if you haven't seen it. Uh, but people responded in the comments uh, that they wanted to see gameplay of it, uh, and kind of to serve as a contrast to... Uh, the gameplay I have of the other uh, Stompy list. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, there's definitely a few cards I would change. Uh, for one, I would get the right art of the river boa because I yeah I have a I have a thing where I really I really want I always want to have the common printings of the cards in my deck, uh, which with unification has become a little harder. Oh, it's Paulo. Uh, alrighty, but yeah, uh, overall, small price to pay for unification, uh, but yeah. Alrighty. Uh, so, yeah, this hand's really strong. Uh, Let's see. I forget. All right. So Paulo is back on Tron. They were on Boros, or not Boros. They were on Burn for a while, if I recall. And I think I ran into them on Boggles. Uh, but yeah. Though now that Delver has made an appearance in the top eight of a challenge again, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, start seeing him play that again. Okay. So n here, hmm. I think what we want to do here is burning tree, yep, always yes, always yield, all that. Rank or Nelson null. And this is a really good uh, start for us off of Tron because we really don't care how fast they assemble Tron. It's how fast they assemble the fog lock and also the fact that they're a little bit far away from assembling Tron is nice. Uh, yep, so they search out a power plant, uh, which I'm get, which is a blind guess because otherwise they would have played out the mine. Uh, but yeah. Okay, they play out a Thornwood Falls. It's don't see a lot of uh, gain lands in Tron these days, so this is probably. I'm guessing he might be on some sort of reap and sow variant. All right, we draw a nest invader, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, so swing in with both. Get in for six. Untap. Uh, play out a nettle sentinel. Uh, play out a pit skulk that has bloodthirst. Always yes for the new nettle sentinel. And pass turn. So yeah, we have a very fast clock right now. Uh, do we have, let's see, so that's 6, uh, 10, 11. Yeah, we have lethal exactly, so they're going to need a fog. Yeah, they need, they need exactly a fog or just to fire off weather for very low value. Uh... And if they're on the weather plan, then they would be best suited to just casting weather here. And they concede. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, so we had we did have exactly lethal, so that was pretty good. Uh, it doesn't look like this is an astro variant, so I'm actually not that high on gleeful sabotage. Uh, that being said, I don't... Hmm. So we're going to want longbows. Uh, I'm going to cut three swipes go up a sabotage maybe go up let's try going up two sabotages I'll go for the full three opponent side and whether to play or draw they take the play 
Uh, so yeah, okay. This hand is really good. Uh, it's a little clunky just based on, like, elephant guides and such. But honestly, like, it's not going to be that big of a deal. It's just a strong hand, and I think a little bit of clunkiness is acceptable. Uh, but yeah, so what's going to likely happen next turn is just play a Nest Invader pass. Uh, then if we draw land, uh, we can hunger, hunger, rancor. If we don't, then we just hunger and hunger. Uh, but yeah. So our opponent lit on tower, uh, plays a power plant. Uh, we're going to see a perfect prism, yep. So, if they have turn 3 Tron, they do... Alright, we draw another land, which is actually good. Uh, but yeah, so, pass back to them. Okay, they play a Thornwood Falls, we're fine with that. So, alright, we have a few possible options here. We could just Elephant Guide, but that does not optimize our damage. Uh, we could just Rancor, Hunger, Hunger. Uh... But, yeah, I think that we could also, like, sack this, play out the Nest Invader, Hunger, Hunger, but, yeah, I think it's just too much upside. Just a casual 10 damage on turn 3. Alrighty, pass turn back. Imagine if we had a 1-drop, too. Alright, so they have Tron assembled. Uh, they don't have a target for Pulse of Marasa. Doesn't look like that's what they're going for. Do they have... Yep, Ulmog, Scrusher. Alright. Uh, Alright, yeah. Ulmog, Scrusher is... I mean, it's a thing. But they're gonna have to use it to chump here. Because uh, otherwise we just kill them. And we're going to sur- Because of Elephant Guide, we're going to survive this attack. So it's- yeah. Swing in. Umox Crusher, ironically, is actually really bad at chump blocking too. Just because it attacks every turn. Yeah, it's. I still think it's okay to bring in in this matchup, but yeah. We do. Something to note, they do now have a pulse target, uh, but they cycled a remote aisle, so they would have had one anyway. Uh, and they need moments peace or we just win. So yeah, our biggest strength right now is that they don't. They really haven't done a lot of digging. They've played a prophetic mm -hmm. prism and cycled a remote aisle. Alright, so. Two and a blue. We seen like impulse or all right, a flicker on prism and tower, uh, keeping up as much mana as possible while drawing a card. All right, uh, no plays means either we've won or yep, looks like they drew the fog. Yep, moments piece. All right, we draw a Korean Ranger. Uh, yeah, I'll just, for kicks, and in case I guess they have Fade Away, I don't think anybody's played Fade Away in years. <laughs> Eight. I'm fine with another mm -hmm. Crusher. If they want Crush, I am absolutely down for that. Yeah, I mean, if we swing in with everything, they still have to spend the second fog, which is good because it means it uh, keeps them from having a fog lock for another turn. I mean, Crusher gets in, but I don't care about that at all. I don't actually even think I'd sack Rancor, because usually that's the, the cheeky thing you can do, is you can just sacrifice your Rancor, uh, get it back, and replay it. I don't think I'm going to do that, just because they could technically counter it, and yeah. <sighs> he said hard. Yeah, it's not 
yeah, it's not a good. Doesn't look like it's a good matchup. <laughs> if the video jumps for a few seconds, uh, it's actually because uh, the space key is what I use to pause, uh, or at least it's what's binded to the pause function on the recording software I'm using. Uh, so it, uh, when I try and type something in chat, uh, it constantly pauses and unpauses. Uh, but yeah, so... Alrighty, and we win. Uh, yeah, our opponent drew pretty poorly, uh, but yeah, uh, back to, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, too, like, this, I don't like running Simic Signet. There's, we have a format now where we have mana fixing attached to, like, we have mana fixing attached to a cantrip. Just, like, Simic Signet allows you to play, like, Crusher on turn three if you have Tron, but it's honestly just not, I don't think it's worth it. Like, I think, yeah, this format really doesn't want turn three Tron. I think the most, the best Tron starts have Tron on turn four. Like, they have some combination of, I mean, obviously there is, like, if you draw a million prophetic prisms, then you can have a good start with turn three Tron, but like, Tron on turn four is usually where it wants to be. It wants to have an Astral Wave out. It wants to have, like, a Mole Drifter in hand or an Impulse or a Mystical Teachings. Yeah. So, like, it really it really doesn't need, like, the nut draw of, like, Olmog's Crusher. But, yeah. On to the next round.